Hello everyone, welcome to Text Connect, a learning center for textile. Today we will be covering some parts of the winding process and then learn about a new process that is pearl winding. Till now we have seen about the objects of winding, faults in winding, main machine parts, etc. Now let us see what are the types of winding process. Basically, it is divided into two. One is precision winding and other is non-precision winding. In precision winding, many coils of yarn are wound parallel or closely parallel to each other. Here tension of yarn is comparatively high and a compact and dense package is produced. Flash bobbins are used in this process. In precision winding, the drive is directly given to the spindle on which the package is mounted. Next is non-precision winding. Here, a single thread is laid in a helix angle and it crosses over each other to give stability. A less dense package is produced over here and tension of yarn is comparatively less and the package produced is soft. Here, the package is not directly driven by the spindle. First, the drive is passed to the drum and then the drum drives the package. So we can call it drum driven. Now let us talk about the packages that are produced. Parallel wound packages. In precision winding, we saw parallel wound packages were produced. Where the yarns are parallelly laid. A flange bobbin is required as you all can see in the image. And here a traversing guide is not required. Now next is the cross wound package. In non-precision winding, we saw cross wound package was produced by coils that were laid in a helix angle. Here, comparatively a soft package was produced with good air gaps. So dyeing in package form becomes easier in cross wound package. Here, unwinding is also easier and is faster. For the crossing and traversing of the yarn, a groove drum is used. Now, let us move on to the factors affecting the productivity of winding machine. The first factor is end breakage rate. When an end breaks, the spindle needs to stop for the melding of the end, be it by splicing or by knotting. Next is length of the yarn on the ring bobbin. If the length of the yarn on the ring bobbin is less, then the machine needs to stop more frequently for the replenishment of a new full bobbin. Next factor is speed of the winding machine. As the name suggests, the speed needs to be high, but not very high so that there are breaks and not very low so that the efficiency is reduced. It needs to be optimum. The next is spindle allocation to the winder. If a winder is allocated with more number of spindles and if there is a stoppage, it may take some time for the winder to come to that particular spindle and start the machine. And this may affect the efficiency of the machine. And the last factor is miscellaneous machine stoppages. It may be due to technical breakdowns or any other factor. Now, let us start with a new process that is pearl winding. So the first question that comes to your mind is what is a pearl? In shuttle looms, a shuttle is used to pass the weft through the shed from one side of the machine to another. A pearl is a weft package that is placed inside the shuttle. As you all can see in the image, the pearl is placed inside the shuttle. The dimensions of the pearl need to be governed according to the shuttle dimensions. Pearl winding process This process is a little different from the normal winding process. Unlike winding, the final package is smaller than the input package. Here is a schematic diagram of the pearl winding process. A cone or a cheese from the winding process is fed to the machine. A yarn guide is used to guide the yarn through the path. Then a tension device is used to maintain uniform tension. Next is a stop motion which is used to stop the machine when a thread break occurs. Then a yarn guide with a traverse mechanism is used for the movement of the yarn and also for the guidance of the yarn. We'll see in the coming slides how is the package built. And the last is the pearl which is the final package. So as we know that the yarn in the winding is fault free or else the optimum removal of faults has taken place. 
so here additional requirement of fault removal is not needed now next let us see the types of purn winding machines the first type is non automatic purn winding machine in this machine the changing of the purn that is the replacement of a full purn by an empty purn is done manually the next is semi automatic purn winding machine in the semi automatic purn winding machine the purn is donned manually but is doffed automatically and in the automatic purn winding machine the donning and doffing both are done automatically next is purn winding principle the purn winding principle is a little different than that of the cone and cheese winding process in purn winding if a cross wound package is produced then there would be tension variation during the weaving process and if a parallel wound package is produced then there would be instability therefore a different kind of winding principle is used here here short conical cross wound sections are overlapped on one another creating a tapered shape generally the base of the purn is conical the distance traveled in one stroke of traverse for one section is called as chase length as you all can see in the diagram one layer of coil is laid on another during the forward as well as return movement of the traverse this diagram is zoomed for representation only the gaps are not so wide the overlapping is very close to each other and a tapered shape of the purn is produced and then this purn is used in the shuttle for the weaving process so this was it from my side guys i hope the whole process was understood if you all have any doubts please mention them in the comments below you can also write to us via email please follow us on all social media handles and please like the video share it with all the textile people you know and do subscribe to text connect a learning center for textiles stay healthy and stay connected thank you